I'm making this video as a response to all other Christian videos that I see on YouTube or anywhere else on the internet. And the reason I'm making it is because the expectations that I perceive from watching those other Christian videos are completely different to what the Bible itself describes in regard to Jesus Christ's return. I believe most Christians have a very misled view of what Christianity would be like at the time Jesus Christ returns and without that perception uh, are not prepared for that very significant event. Christians do not realize what is really happening to Christianity. And so I intend to use the web and a screen capture program and the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures because it has a very fast interface and I can jump between scriptures quickly. Please watch this video because I think every Christian will be surprised at what the scriptures actually do say and their perceptions should be overturned and their convictions changed through watching this video. In contemplating the condition of Christianity immediately before Jesus Christ returns, a good place to start is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And this is where the Apostle Paul describes what to expect immediately before the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and being gathered together to Him, which most Christians accept will be the end of the world when Jesus Christ returns. Notice that the Apostle Paul is indeed talking about that end of the world event and he calls it the day of Jehovah is here. In some Bible translations it says the day of the Lord is here. And so this is in regard to the time of the end of the world which every Christian is looking forward to because it's when Jesus Christ returns. So as Christians it's very important for us to understand the condition of Christianity at that time. At the time that our Lord Jesus Christ is present and are being gathered together to Him in the day of the Lord. And so the Apostle Paul describes what Christianity will be like at that time. He says here that that time will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness gets revealed the son of destruction. And so what Jesus Christ or what the Apostle Paul is describing here is an apostasy or an abandonment of a previous loyalty and if this is in, is in regard to Christianity then the loyalty is to Jesus Christ and so an apostasy means that Christians will no longer be loyal to Jesus Christ they'll be loyal to something else and here it describes a man of lawlessness gets revealed and it's also describing this man as the son of destruction. So if this is in regard to Christianity, there's only ever been one other person described as a son of destruction, and that was Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was a called anointed one who betrayed Jesus Christ. So immediately before Jesus Christ returns, we can expect a modern day son of destruction. 
Now, this might be a composite son of destruction, so there may be more than one man involved. It could be a composite man, and I will show a scripture where it does indeed describe a man who has access to the temple of God. And so now, this man is set in opposition and lifts himself up. And so here we have the son of destruction, an anointed one, lifting himself up over everyone who is called God or an object of reverence. And so this would include Jesus Christ. The son of destruction would lift himself up above Jesus Christ so that he sits down in the temple of the God and at the present time the temple of the God or at the time immediately before Jesus Christ returns the temple of the God is the Christian temple it is not a brick and mortar temple the temple of the God is actually built of anointed called ones and so this son of destruction, the modern-day Judas Iscariot, will show himself to be a god. Now, if you're a Christian, thinking about these things, going to church every Sunday, and you believe that the return of Jesus Christ is, immediate, is imminent, then look around your church, because... What you should find is what Paul is describing if you're in a true Christian organization. Because this will not happen to false Christianity or hypocritical Christians. This is happening to the temple of God, to true Christianity. Please contemplate the significance of what Paul is describing here. So if you are a true Christian person, then I hope you understand that it's very important to examine what the Apostle Paul said. And this is what he said. He said, the mystery of this lawlessness is already at work, even in his own day. But understand that immediately before Jesus Christ returns, the Christian lawlessness would reach the point where it enters the actual temple of the God. The Apostle Paul also explains that something acts as a restraint that needs to be out of the way before we can see the man of lawlessness. Once that lawless one is revealed, Jesus Christ will do away with him by the spirit of his mouth and in my opinion the spirit of Jesus Christ's mouth is simply the truth and notice that the man of lawlessness the son of destruction will be brought to nothing by the manifestation of his presence and so please understand that the manifestation of his presence is likely different to the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so our Lord Jesus Christ will be present and a point in time will be reached where that presence will be manifested. And it's my opinion that is when every eye will see him and the tribes of the earth will beat themselves in lamentation because they'll know that Jesus Christ is returning. Now, should you be afraid at that time and beat yourself in lamentation? In my opinion, it depends on whether you can see the extent that Christianity has been undermined immediately before Jesus Christ returns. And if you believe you are a true Christian, worshipping in the true temple, then it's something very important for you to do. Notice that this is according to the operation of Satan who will trick Christians with powerful works, lying signs, and portents. 
and unrighteous deceptions for those who are perishing. And so the Apostle Paul is addressing Christians here who have been deceived and who will perish. Even more important for every single Christian to properly understand what's happening to Christianity immediately before Jesus Christ returns because if they are deceived by this man of lawlessness, the son of destruction, then the end result is perishing. Why? Because they did not accept the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so I'm hoping that what I'm presenting here that you will understand that I'm telling you the truth. God lets an operation of error go to them, to Christians, that they may get to believing the lie. So what is the lie? The lie will be one of those signs that are due to the operation of Satan. The lying signs and portents. And so you sh it would be in a Christian's best interest to identify the lie. Now, the man of lawlessness is identified as a son of destruction. And I mentioned that the man of lawlessness may not just be an individual, but could be a composite man. In other words, a number of individuals. And so, in my opinion, in order to determine that, we need to find a place in the Bible which describes a man who does indeed have access to the temple of the God. Because not just any man can enter the temple of the God. There are prerequisites for being able to do that. And so I'd like to now jump to a scripture in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 2 which does indeed describe a composite man who has access to and in fact is the temple of the God. And so here we are in Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 11 it talks about people of the nations, and that they were strangers to the covenants of the promises and alienated from the state of Israel. So it's talking about Gentiles and Jews. And it states that they are now in union with Christ together. Both Gentiles and Jews are in union with Christ. And what I would like to bring to your attention is where it says that by means of his flesh he abolished the enmity. In other words, there's no reason for enmity between Jews and Gentiles if they're all Christians. And so he says here that he might create the two peoples in union with himself into what? Into one new man. So here we have one new man created out of two peoples. So understand that this one new man is a composite man. And it says here that he might fully reconcile both peoples. Okay, and now it's referring to that one new man into one body one new man to God through the torture state because he has killed off the enmity by means of himself. And he came and declared the good news of peace to you, the ones far off, and peace to those near, the new man. And so, notice here it says, you are no longer strangers and alien residents. So he's speaking to the Gentiles here, that they're no longer strangers to 
the Jewish Christians, they are both the same. They're one man. Fellow citizens of the Holy Ones and members of the house of God. Here it says that this man, remember the one new man, is being built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, while Jesus Christ himself is the foundation cornerstone of his temple. And in union with him, the whole building, the temple, is being harmoniously joined together and growing into what? Growing into a holy temple for God. In union with him, you two are being built up together into a place for God to inhabit by spirit. And so, what is the temple of the God? Well, it's Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone, the apostles, who are the foundation, and the prophets, and the one new man is the holy temple growing on top of that foundation. So now we have indeed identified a man described who has access to the temple of God and this man is not an individual. This one new man is made up of multiple people. This is very important to understand if you hope to identify the man of lawlessness. So an important thing here for Christian to understand is that the holy temple, the temple of the God, is not a brick and mortar temple. It is a temple made of Jesus Christ, the apostles and prophets, and this one new man who's being built upon that foundation and growing into the holy temple. Immediately before Jesus Christ returns, you would hope that holy temple would be a righteous place. And yet, if we go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, immediately before Jesus Christ returns, that temple is anything but a holy place because that man of lawlessness has lifted himself up above a God and sit down in the temple of the God. And so as a Christian, you would not want to be deceived by this deception because if you are, the Apostle Paul indicates that those people will be perishing. So, do you now have incentive to watch through the rest of this video? So now, if you do understand that it's very important for any Christian to identify this man of lawlessness, then it puts you in a terrible predicament because the church you are going to will not want to hear what you have to say. So imagine, please, that you do see the truth and you have faith in the truth and that you can see and understand the mystery of this lawlessness and you have seen the man of lawlessness and understand who he is, then what are you going to do? Are you not obliged to, within your own church, identify and point to the man of lawlessness? And these will be the ones leading your church, the ones who want you to believe that everything is just great. And so, as a person who can see this man of lawlessness, who speaks up within his church and says, listen, the temple of God has been profaned by a man of lawlessness who has lifted himself up above a God, 
Jesus Christ, then you will not be welcome in that church. So please spend time contemplating what is going to happen to a person who actually sees through the unrighteous deception. Understand the predicament this puts a righteous person in who can see the truth. So imagine the kind of stir it would cause in your congregation if you brought this to the attention of your Christian brothers and pointed out this fact to them. Would you not then be hated for having done that? In fact, you would probably no longer be welcome in that church. And I'd like to bring your attention to an end time scripture in Isaiah, in the Old Testament, the last chapter of Isaiah, chapter 66. And notice please what happens to the ones who can see the truth. And hopefully what I've described to you, the condition of Christianity, makes you tremble at the thought. And notice the scripture in Isaiah 66 and verse 5. Hear the word of Jehovah, you men who are trembling at his word. And so have I made you tremble from describing the condition of Christianity immediately before Jesus Christ returns? And if you bring this up inside your own church, what are your Christian brothers going to do to you? It describes exactly what they're going to do here. Your brothers that are hating you, that are excluding you by reason of my name, said, may God be glorified. And so these people will continue to believe right to the end that God is being properly worshipped. And yet notice, if you are indeed one of these men who are trembling at his word, and indeed you have every right to tremble after what I've explained to you and what the Apostle Paul said would happen immediately before Jesus Christ returns, then what will indeed happen at the end? He must also appear. Who? Jesus Christ will appear in his Father's name with rejoicing on your part. And who will be brought to shame? They are the ones that will be brought to shame. The ones that are hating you and that are excluding you by reason of my name. And this is Jehovah, God, speaking to Isaiah. And what is God's name? Jehovah. So, are there actual men anywhere in the world today being excluded from a Christian congregation by reason of God's name, Jehovah? Is there any Christian organization today who exclude righteous men who are trembling at his word? Think carefully about this. Notice also what happens next. Immediately after verse 5, there is a sound of uproar out of the city, a sound out of the temple. If this is an end time scripture, that temple is the Christian temple. And what happens to that temple that has been undermined and profaned by the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction? Notice it is the sound of of Jehovah, repaying what is deserved to his enemies. Now, I should probably go on here in Isaiah and show to you that during this time, these men who are trembling at his word, that it won't be a pleasant time. It will be a terrible, awful predicament. And the next verse in verse 7 
should give you some comfort if you are indeed a Christian person in this predicament and yet I don't believe there are very many men who have recognized this. It says here that before she began to come into labor pain she gave birth and so this will be a painful time. Before birth pangs could come to her she gave deliverance to a male child. Who has heard of a thing like this? Who has seen things like this? Will a lamb be brought forth with labor pains in one day? No, it will take some time. Will a nation be born at one time? It will take some time. For Zion has come into labor pain, pains as well as given birth to her sons. And so these sons are the ones trembling at his word. And so where will these sons be? They will be excluded. They will not be in your Christian organization. Please understand this. These sons, the holy ones, the ones who have faith in the truth, will be hated and excluded. And after what you've heard me describe, the condition of Christianity, please understand why. Now, some people might object and uh, say that, no, this is not talking about the Christian temple or about Christian brothers being hated and excluded because this is an Old Testament scripture. And so if you believe that, I would like to overturn your objection by taking you to a place where Jesus Christ describes the same kind of thing as identified it by Isaiah and that's in John chapter 16 and if we go to verse 1 you'll notice Jesus Christ says I have spoken these things to you that you may not be stumbled and certainly if you recognize what's happening with the man of lawlessness you might indeed be stumbled and I'm sure some Christians will be stumbled just by what I've said so far in this video. In verse 2 it says men will expel you from the synagogue and so a synagogue can also mean a church and it says here the hour is coming when everyone that kills you and so this is a future event everyone that kills you will imagine he has rendered a sacred service to God and so imagine the predicament of these righteous men who go to their church and say listen uh, I'm concerned about this man of lawlessness because true Christianity will be undermined immediately before Je Jesus Christ returns and then being excluded the people the church your church excluding you and and uh, not welcoming you to their church anymore will imagine they have rendered a sacred service to God and if this if you are indeed a person that this happens to or has already happened to understand that they will do these things because they have not come to know either the Father or me but remember that Jesus Christ told you that these things would indeed happen so if you watch the video up to this point please understand why those things will happen The Apostle Paul also speaks about the same kind of event happening in Romans chapter 9. And so if we go to Romans chapter 9 and verse 25, it says there, It is as he says also in Hosea, Those not my people I will call my people, and her who was not beloved in other words, they were hated, beloved. And in the place, so what place? The church, in the place, in the church where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. And so in that same place where they were excluded and hated, 
not beloved, they will eventually be called sons of the living God. And so, as a Christian, please understand that immediately before Jesus Christ returns, Christianity will not be ruled by the sons of the living God. It will have been undermined and the leadership of the church will be through the man of lawlessness, the sons of destruction. Satan's success, the operation of Satan will be so successful that Christianity will be undermined. And so, please understand why the men who can see this will be hated because there is no church in the world today that will put up with a member of their congregation coming to them and describing what I am describing to you. It would not be accepted. And in fact, Jesus Christ will have to return before Christianity is restored to the way it should be. I'd like to draw your attention to this book, Organized to Do Jehovah's Will, which was published in 2005. And in it, there is a procedure where brothers are indeed excluded through the use of God's name, Jehovah. On page 154 of the Organized to Do Jehovah's Will book, Please notice that there is an official announcement of disfellowship described that needs to be performed when a brother is excluded from a Christian congregation. And so I'd like to zoom in on these words so that my audience can carefully examine them. So in this official procedure, the announcement of disfellowshipping or excommunication or excluding a brother from a Christian congregation is explained in this paragraph. When it is necessary to disfellowship an unrepentant wrongdoer from the congregation, a brief announcement is made simply stating name of person is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. And so the important things to recognize in this statement, which became an official procedure in the year 2005, is that it says an unrepentant wrongdoer from the congregation. Now please imagine a brother who is trembling at God's word and who brings to his congregation's attention the condition that he believes Christianity will be in with a man of lawlessness and a son of destruction undermining Christianity, how he would be treated, pointing the finger at his own religion. Of course, they would believe that he was unrepentant because he was bringing doubt to his own Christian brothers. Now the other thing that should be very carefully considered is the announcement itself. Name of person. The person's name is proclaimed in front of the entire congregation and the words are is no longer one of Jehovah's witnesses. And so please note here the brother is being excluded by reason of God's name Jehovah, exactly as stated in that scripture in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 5. Further to that, in Romans 9 and chapter 26, it says, and I'll read it for you, in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they will be called sons of the living God. 
And so notice here in this statement, name of person, you, is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses, are not my people. You are not my people. I would ask my audience to very carefully consider the profundity of the parallels to the Bible scriptures that this published announcement makes. Is there any other religion in the world where it is said to a brother, you are not my people, and that it's done through the use of God's name by reason of my name, says Jehovah. Very carefully contemplate this. So what can we expect when Jesus Christ returns and those sons of destruction, the man of lawlessness, is held accountable for undermining Jesus Christ's own church? Well, Paul goes on to describe what happens in verse 27. Moreover, Isaiah cries out, and notice this is the Old Testament Isaiah, crying out what will happen. Although the number of the sons of Israel may be as the sand of the sea, it is the remnant that will be saved. For God, for Jehovah, will make an accounting on the earth the day of the Lord, mentioned in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. They were in expectation of the day of the Lord. And this terrible predicament will be concluded and cut short. So please understand that if it is the remnant that will be saved, it is the remaining ones who can see through the unrighteous deception described in Second Thessalonians, the operation of Satan, the man of lawlessness, the son of destruction. It is the remnant that will be saved. So what happens to those who cannot see through Satan's unrighteous deception? Well, let's go back to Second Thessalonians, and the Apostle Paul explains what happens to the ones who are not the remnant, who can see the mystery of the man of lawlessness. It says here, the lawless one's presence is according to the operation of Satan, with very powerful works and lying signs and portents. So Satan is successful, undermining Christianity. With every unrighteous deception for those who are what? Perishing. And so it is the remnant that will be saved. The ones who have faith in the truth. So this man of lawlessness, or the, the mystery of this lawlessness, will be revealed before Jesus Christ returns. And it will be done away with by the spirit of his mouth, or the truth. And the man of lawlessness will be brought to nothing by the manifestation of his presence. So what can we expect to happen to Christianity, to true Christianity, when Jesus Christ returns? Well, Jesus Christ tells us in Matthew and chapter 13. Notice in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus Christ's apostles asked Jesus to explain one of his illustrations. Notice carefully what, how Jesus Christ answered them. Jesus Christ said that the harvest, when that remnant is harvested, is at the conclusion of the system of things the end of the world. The reapers are angels. Therefore, just as the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so it will be at the conclusion of this system of things. What will Jesus Christ do? He will send forth his angels 
and they will collect out from where? From his kingdom, from Christianity, all things that are causing stumbling and persons who are doing lawlessness. And who makes the law? Jesus Christ. And so what laws are these persons disobeying? Jesus Christ's laws. And they will pitch them into the fiery furnace. Remember in 2 Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul said they would perish. And so what happens to the holy ones after Jesus Christ does this? It says here, at that time, the righteous ones, the ones who can see this man of lawlessness, will shine as brightly as the sun. Where? Because right now they're outside the kingdom. At that time, they will shine as brightly as the sun in the kingdom of their father. They will no longer be people who are excluded and cast outside of their church. They will be in the kingdom of their Father. This happens once Jesus Christ returns. So, understanding this, please recognize the predicament of Christianity immediately before Jesus Christ returns. Let him that has ears listen. So now if you understand that these righteous ones will not be in the kingdom until Jesus Christ returns, then perhaps now is a good time to take a look at the book of Daniel and it can be further understood in chapter 7. And notice in chapter 7, this is where the four beasts are described. The first one like a lion, the second one like a bear, third one like a leopard, and then a fourth terrible fearsome one. And we'll notice that in Daniel chapter 7 it's described what will happen at the end. Thrones placed before the Ancient of Days, and his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like clean wool, his throne with flames of fire, its wheels were a burning fire. There was a stream of fire flowing and going out from before him. And there were a thousand thousands that kept ministering to him and ten thousand times ten thousand that kept standing before him. So these are the angels that Jesus Christ will send forth. And notice now it says, the court took its seat and there were books that were opened. What are these books? I believe these books are the same scrolls mentioned in Revelation chapter 20. And so if we go to Revelation chapter 20, it says that the scroll of life will be opened. And I saw the dead, the great, and the small standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. And another scroll was opened. It is the scroll of life. And the dead were judged out of the things written in the scrolls according to their deeds. So here, here in Daniel, these books that were opened are the scrolls. And now notice that what happens to that fourth terrible beast. I kept on beholding until the beast was killed and its body was destroyed and it was given to the burning fire. Do you see the parallel to that scripture in Matthew chapter 13 where Jesus Christ said his angels would pitch them into the burning fire? Now, it says here, as for the rest of the beasts, their rulerships were taken away, but there was a lengthening in life given to them for a time and a season. And so, these rest of the beasts, the, the lion, the bear, the leopard, their life is extended for a short while. And so the fourth terrible beast is the one that has taken hold of Jesus Christ's 
kingdom and undermined it, undermined Christianity. And so it's my belief that these other beasts are early iterations of Christian organizations. Now notice what happens at the end. It says, the angel describes to him, to Daniel, what will happen to this last wild beast. It says, the court itself proceeded to sit, and his own rulership they finally take away. So who's ruling Christianity at the end of the world? the conclusion of the system of things, the man of lawlessness, the sons of destruction. And notice what happens. Annihilated and destroyed totally. Remember in Second Thessalonians, it told us that Jesus Christ would bring him to nothing at the manifestation of his presence. He will annihilate him and destroy him totally. So it's important here for a Christian to understand that these beasts are Christianity. These are Christian organizations. Now once this rulership is taken away and the man of lawlessness is annihilated or brought to nothing, what happens to Jesus Christ's kingdom? It says, and the kingdom and the rulership and the grandeur of the kingdoms under all the heavens were given to the people who are who? The holy ones of the supreme one. Their kingdom is an indefinitely lasting kingdom and all rulerships will serve and obey even them. And so these holy ones, these are the righteous ones who will be in the kingdom when Jesus Christ returns and removes that man of lawlessness, the sons of destruction. And so understand that until after Jesus Christ returns, the rulership of Christianity will not be through the Holy Ones. This is important for every Christian in the world to understand. You go to church every Sunday and believe that you are correctly worshiping or glorifying God and yet immediately before Jesus Christ returns the holy ones who will be ruling Christianity their kingdom will be an indefinitely lasting kingdom those holy, holy ones will not be ruling the church who will be ruling the church the man of lawlessness. And it will not be until Jesus Christ returns that his rulership will be taken away. And Jesus Christ's manifestation will bring him to nothing. If you are a Christian who for the first time is realizing this, then I really do hope you are trembling at his word, as it says in Isaiah chapter 66 and that you bring this to your own Christian brother's attention. However, upon doing that, do expect that your own Christian brothers will hate you for questioning their religion. Christianity is in a terrible predicament. So now, if you are a Christian who is understanding these things for the first time that Christianity will be successfully undermined by Satan immediately before Jesus Christ returns then I recommend that you uh, look at some more of the videos in my channel and remember that in 2 Thessalonians that it said that God lets an operation of error go to them that may, they may get to believing the lie. And so if you do go to my YouTube channel, which is Isaiah 30 V8, there's a link 
on my channel page, the website link to a blog where I have a video that describes the lie. And you can also get a book in hard copy by clicking on this link and that will take you to a place where you can get a hard copy of a 130 page book which describes who the man of lawlessness is and this is a, a print-on-demand public publishing company called Lulu you can reach that link through my channel page also if you want to read the book electronically go to my blog click on the script D icon on the bottom of the sidebar in my blog and it will take you to a place where you can download a copy of my book or you could read it online through the script D interface and so I strongly recommend that every Christian does that and examine the circumstances of Christianity immediately before Jesus Christ returns. Now on my on my YouTube page there is uh, also many other videos which describe the man of lawlessness and the predicament that Christianity is in and I recommend that you start with uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses desolated and that can be uh, reached through my channel page and there's 10 videos they're about 10 minutes each it'll take about an hour to watch them and I describe in detail how the man of lawlessness has entered the temple and undermined Christianity or Jesus Christ's covenant that he inaugurated with his death. Please uh, spend time uh, examining uh, these things. Now if you are indeed a righteous Christian there's a very good chance that the things I've presented in this video have been very disturbing and difficult to bear and perhaps even tormenting and yet I'd like to draw your attention to something that Jesus Christ said in John chapter 16 listen carefully to what he said I have many things yet to say to you but you are not able to bear them at present however when that one arrives the spirit of the truth he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak of his own impulse but what things he hears he will speak and he will declare to you the things coming that one will glorify me because he will receive from what is mine and will declare it to you and so hopefully that will bring you some comfort that yes indeed Jesus Christ had difficult news for Christians and if you've persevered through my video I think you'll understand why and yet remember what he said later he said most truly I say to you you will weep and wail but the world will rejoice you will be grieved but your grief will be turned into joy a woman when she is giving birth has grief because her hour has arrived but when she has brought forth the young child she remembers the tribulation no more because of the joy that a man has been born into the world you also therefore are now indeed having grief but I shall see you again and your hearts will rejoice and your joy no one will take from you and so I hope you've taken note of the things 
I've said in this video. And please remember that Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 24 told us that the ones who will be swept away in the flood are those who will take no note. So remember what Jesus Christ said, most truly I say to you, you will weep and wail, but the world will rejoice. You will be grieved, but your grief will be turned into joy. And remember what the two witnesses in the book of Revelation would uh, say and the circumstances surrounding their demise. Notice the parallel to what Jesus told his apostles in John. And those dwelling on the earth rejoice over them and enjoy themselves. themselves. The world rejoices. They will send gifts to one another. One another. Why? Because these two prophets tormented those dwelling on the earth. Are you taking note? On that note, I'll finish the video.